Hey, this video is for Julietta. Um, she asks, I've purchased or downloaded a font online and uh, now I want to apply it to my Shopify site. How do I go about doing that? Uh, so there's a few steps. Uh, the first one is you want to generate uh, multiple files based off of that one font file and that's just because each browser has its own way of generating fonts um, and so you want to make it compatible to as many browsers as possible. Uh, the second one is to upload those files onto your Shopify site and the third one is to inject CSS letting your site know that those files are there. So the first thing to do is to generate multiple files uh, to make this font um, cross-browser compatible. So thankfully there's a lot of sites out there that have these file generators. Uh, one of them is fontsquirrel.com. Uh, if you click on generator, uh, this is where you'll want to upload the, the font that you've, you've downloaded or purchased. And so for this one I'm using IndieFlower, which is a Google font. So once we select that, um, you can select optimal, which is a default setting. Uh, if you click on Expert, you can actually see the different files that could be generated. Um, and you can do a simple Google search and, and figure out what those files do and which browsers they're, they're compatible for. Uh, but for most modern um, browsers, WAF and WAF2 should be enough. So once you agree to that, you can download your kit. Uh, and it spits out this zip file, which uh, after you unzip it, it has this folder with a few files. And there's only a few that actually uh, you'll be needing. First, the first two are the WAF and the WAF2 files, which are your font source files. And that's what you'll be uploading to your, SharePoint, uh, to your Shopify site. The third one is your stylesheet.css, which is the CSS you'll be injecting. And we need to modify that because we're using it, as, we're using it on Shopify. So um, now that you've downloaded those files, uh, you can now upload them onto your Shopify site. So if you navigate to the Assets folder and click Add a New Asset, that's, your, that's where you'll select those two files and upload them. So I've already done that, and once you do that, they'll show up um, under that folder, and so these are the two files right there. So now we've uploaded onto the, the Shopify site. So the third step is letting, um, or is injecting CSS, letting your site know that those files are there. So that's where that third file comes in handy, that stylesheet.css. And so we're going to open it up, and this has the CSS code that you'll want to put in. So you simply copy all of that, then you navigate to your um, styles.scss file and you're just going to put it anywhere you want and I usually create a, a custom section just to let myself know that this, this is everything I've customized on this site so um, paste it into that that file and we need to do some customization here the first one is, uh, and this is totally cosmetic you can just change that name to something more readable and that's just the name of the font so this is pretty important actually. So this font family uh, text is what you'll be using in any CSS file and that's how um, CSS will know that you're referencing this information right here. Uh, the second thing we need to do is we need to tell Shopify where to look. So in, in liquid code, that's two open brackets. Um, actually we'll need to have an apostrophe before that. Two uh, open brackets and then the font name which we have here. Then we're going to need a vertical bar, and then we're going to put type in asset underscore URL, and then close that out with two more brackets and another apostrophe. And what we're basically doing is we're letting Shopify know to look in the assets folder, which is what this text actually does. So we'll want to do that for both, uh, both of these source files. All right. So those are the three customizations you need to do for, uh, for the CSS code. Uh, let's save that. And you can actually stop there if you want to just reference that indie flower straight in your CSS file. So you could essentially just put that in here and that would apply the change already. But we're going to make it a little easier for you. Um, the second thing you want to do is you'll want to uh, have that font appear in your dropdown. So as you can see, indie flower isn't showing up on this just yet. So to do that, we navigate to the config folder and click on um, settings schema and what you'll want to do is you'll want to search for the word typography and uh, in that section is what populates that drop down box full, full of fonts and so um, you'll want to scroll down, scroll down a little um, until you start seeing really familiar font names and so you see the pattern each font name is enclosed in brackets so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy one of these and just paste it. And now we're going to use that sort of as a template to create a new uh, drop-down option. So this value is basically 
what we want to put our font name in. And again, you have to make it exactly as it was in that font family uh, line that we put in early, earlier. So it's indie flower. And don't forget the apostrophes before and after the name. This label is what we see in the dropdown. Um, and you can change that to whatever you want. But we'll just make it easy and we'll just call it indie flower just to match the, the font name. And this group, uh, we're going to label that my fonts. And you'll see what that does in just a second. So after we save that asset, um, we'll now go back to the, um, the themes page, refresh this screen. And when you click on typography, you can now see your option. And that group, uh, you can see that it actually creates a new group called My Fonts. Now you can put it in any of these other groups, but we'll just put it in a new group just to, to let yourself know that this is a custom font. So click on Indie Flower. And now we have that font appearing on your site.